What do you what, when you say that? That's something that's come up in a lot of conversations around the athletes I've spoken to, and um, I, my own personal career. Like I understand the sacrifices that come, but what what do you mean by the price you've had to pay when you say yeah, that? Yeah. So like, I I remember. So when I started fighting, it would have been the same any time in my life. But the the there the were always distractions. There always there was always some really good reason to not go to the gym. Right. Uh, for me, you know, when I started fighting, I had a job during the day, which was nothing. I think I was, man, what was I working? I think I was working at Starbucks. Um, and afterwards, it was real easy to be like, all right, we're just going to hang out, play video games, drink, do whatever. But I was like, if I keep, you know, this is boring. Like, what makes me stand out? What makes me interesting? What makes me a different person? What's making me better? There was there was nothing in my life, so I, I said, "Let me do something that'll do that'll satisfy all that." And fighting, fighting was was a great. It's it's fighting is one of those things. It's like um, low barrier to injury, high barrier yeah. to mastery is like. Yeah. Like anybody can fight. A lot of people ain't gonna stick around. They're not gonna they're not gonna put that, especially as an adult to start in the amateur path is and stick with it and then become a professional. Yeah, that's that's a different uh that it's a different path that, <laughs> that most people <laughs> take. But uh I think it, you know the, the benefits I got from fighting far outweigh. I mean, I, I know my life is is the way it is today because I started fighting not just directly uh, because you know we're having this conversation about fighting and people like oh this guy fought and it's real cool and it still comes up to this dad I, this December will be five years since I've been in the ring competitively right but it still opens doors but indirectly a lot of the skills I learned a lot of the mindsets I developed that helped me with a lot of other things in particular, like getting through college as an adult and, and not an easy subject either. Uh, writing my book, starting my blog, right? Networking, all this stuff. I learned how to approach it because I had to build my fighting career from the ground up and really the, the best way possible, which is I had to go and sell tickets. I had to get people to want to come and see me. I had to be likable, but not be a kiss ass. I had to be interesting, but not like too strange. Um, and I really had to blend and build a, build myself up a crowd and a fan base because if if when you're fighting on the local car level, if you can't do that, you're going to end up being somebody's opponent. You know, you, they're going to bring you in to fight guys who can do that. So if you're brought in, that means that they don't think you can beat them. So it's just a lot harder route. My coach used to say, you know, well, we got to get to the island and there's two ways. We got to get to Paradise Island and there's two ways to get there. We can go through that hurricane and you, you probably, you you might make it through. You might not. The boat's kind of shoddy uh, or we can go around it and going around it costs more fuel and, and more resources and you need a better navigator, but we can do it. And and that's kind of the the limitation that you face. But I had to face that. And as an amateur, not just professional, but as an amateur, too, you got to get on these cars and train. And you don't get any money as an amateur. It's like, you know, do, do people like you? Do they want to come see you fight? 